He came to call sinners to repentance. So the Bible says in Mark chapter 2, Matthew 9, and Luke 5. See, Jesus, people, he warned about hell. He said, if your hand causes you to sin, you are to cut it off. When someone preaches against sin and the consequences of sin, fake Christians want to say that they're trying to preach the law. See, most of the time you'll hear this from so-called believers. The problem is they're actually just offended by the Bible. They claim that when you quote the words of the apostles, well, that's not coming from Jesus. But any real Christian knows that these men were speaking by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Yet these same people will make claims and they'll say, Paul taught that we were no longer under the law. And yes, even though we don't follow the Levitical law, there's still a law that applies. It's called the law of the Spirit. See, what Paul was referring to is that we are not under the Mosaic law, the Levitical law. You'll find him talking about this in Hebrews chapter 7, 8, and 9. It says in Romans 8, 2, verse 4, For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus have made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. For the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. So if you don't believe in the righteous requirement of the law, then you are disobeying the Bible, and you are a fake Christian. See, these fake Christians, they'll claim that Paul never spoke about this. That it was in reference to the fact that we have grace. But the scripture in Titus 2.11 says, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, that we should live soberly and righteously and godly in this present world. Paul said in 11, Romans 11, 22, Behold the goodness and severity of God on them which fell severity, but toward thee goodness, if thou continue in his goodness. Otherwise thou also shall be cut off. Paul said in Acts chapter 21, And when they heard it, they glorified the Lord and said unto him, Thou seest, brother, Brothers, how many thousands of Jews which believe, and they're all zealous of the law. They'll say that what is actually condemning is that if you try to justify yourself under the law. But repentance, it's not the same thing as trying to keep the quote-unquote law. The truth is, when people tell you this, it's because they're living in sin, and they want an excuse not to have to give it up. They claim that we're all sinners, but they can't find one single Bible verse to back this up. They'll try to use Romans 3.23 where it says, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But notice the word sin is in the past tense. When you tell them that you're not a sinner according to God, they want to look at you like you're crazy. The Bible says in Isaiah 1, the destruction of the transgressors and of the sinners shall be together, and they that forsake the Lord shall be consumed. See, there's a clear distinction throughout Scripture between the righteous and the unrighteous, between the sinner and the saint. I have a testimony that I've been cleansed of my sinful ways. That's what you call a Christian. See, Jesus, he did a work in my life. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. And these same people, they'll claim that if you say you're no longer a sinner, they'll say that you're trusting in yourself. 
but that you're self-righteous. That's not actually trusting in yourself. That's, that's just a good conscience and true belief in Jesus Christ, knowing that he has cleansed you of all unrighteousness. The Bible does actually tell us what trusting in yourself is. Ezekiel 33, 13. When I shall say to the righteous that he shall surely live, if he trusts to his own righteousness and commit iniquity, all his righteousness shall not be remembered. For his iniquity that he has committed, he shall die for it. You see, people who trust in themselves, they go on in their sin and they say, well, I'm covered by grace because I believe in Christ, me. Well, they need to read Romans 6, 1 and 2, where it says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Again, they'll claim repentance from your sin is you trying to keep the law. But you'll find the preaching of repentance all throughout the New Testament. Problem is, today's so-called Christians, they've been sitting under these ungodly pastors who will lie to them with a message of love and grace. But they'll leave out the preaching of repentance because they want their pews to stay full. And these same fake Christians, they go out and present this perverted representation of Christianity to the masses. And then when people hear the real message of grace and of truth, well, then they say that you're hateful or that you're trying to keep people bound to the law. I'll say that you could straight up live in sin and that you'll still be granted access into God's kingdom. The Bible says in 1 Peter 4, 17, for the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel? It goes on to say in verse 18, and if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Jesus said, be ye perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. I'll go back to the thief on the cross. They'll say, what about the thief on the cross? But the thing is, the thing, the thing about the thief on the cross, he was declared righteous by the Holy Spirit. Again, what is the name of the Spirit of God? It's holy. Hebrews 12, 14 says, Follow peace with all men in holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. These people will claim that you don't have to live holy. That's what forgiveness is. The Bible says something different. It says, For without are the dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters, and whosoever loveth, and make it a lie. Revelation 22, 15. You'll give these people scripture and they'll deny every single verse. See, what they're doing is just fighting against the word of God, plain and simple. But the truth is that they are the ones that are self-righteous, trusting in their own works and trusting in a false gospel trusting that because because they believe that they're so special now and that God is going to overlook their continual habitual sin under the cover of grace if this is you then you are in danger of hellfire and you need to repent today whosoever is born of God does not commit sin for his seed remaineth in him and he cannot sin because he is born of God. 
1 John 3, 9. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption, for of whom a man is overcome, the same as he brought in bondage. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome, the latter end is worse for them than the beginning. For it had been better for them to have not known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. So this is in Second Peter chapter 2. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Luke 9. 23. Go and sin no more, lest the worst thing come upon you. John 5, 14. Then in John 8, 34 and 35, Jesus answered them. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin, and the servant cannot abide in the house forever. Hebrews 10, 26. For if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. James 2, 19 and 20. Thou believeth that there's one God, thou doeth well. The devils also believe and tremble. And wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? <laughs> 